first thing to do is start off with some introductions because there's a few other places. Um, so, you go first. Can I first of all uh, bring the Chief's apologies? Uh, very uh, unfortunately, he's so having to attend. He's um, the Chief Constable of the National League for Serious Organised Crime. He's actually chairing the National Board today uh, around Serious Organised Crime. So just send his apologies and thanks for his new That's okay. Well, there's nothing we can do about it, so we're just okay on that. <laughs> <laughs> we stop. Uh, I'm Jeff Broadhead. I'm the Director of uh, Resources for Mrs. of uh, I'm Paul Fawkes, not Andy Cook. I'm the Deputy Chief Constable. I'm Jane Kennedy, the Police and Crime Commissioner. Morning, I'm Clark Powers, the Commissioner's Chief Executive. Uh, I'm Karen Gray, I'm Head of Private Office. Uh, John Wright, mm -hmm. Chief Manager of the Police and Crime Commissioner. I'm Keith Fuller, Police and Crime and Health Support Officer, Notes of Council. David Warren, Scrutiny Policy Manager, Notes of Council Support and Health. I'm Carla Thomas, a Councillor in Sefton, and also the Chair. I'm Justin Thompson, I'm the Lead Officer for the Department of Notes of Council. Keith Baker for independent member of the panel. Uh, Councillor Brian Elder from Dublin. Councillor Tony Smith, uh, Councillor from Murrow. Councillor Cherry Pope, Councillor from Murrow. Ruth Bennett, Councillor from Liverpool. Liz Parsons, Councillor from Liverpool. Pat Jackson, Councillor from St. Helens. Councillor Charlie Preston, St. Helens. Great. Have we got any apologies? Uh, we received apologies from. Councillor Simon Shaw, Councillor Council, and uh, Independent Member, Pete Roberts. <coughs> In terms of how the Commissioner plans to balance the budget, 
Um, there is a table in your report, table 3 on page 14, uh, which is how we plan to balance the budget. Uh, just take it quickly through that. Um, we start off with the, the base budget for 17 and 18, and then we consider any committed drug that's been um, approved during the course year. And there's been some quite significant ones there. Um, the allowance for inflation, for example, is 5.3 million. Um, we're now looking at the pay increase of 2% rather than 1%, and, pay, uh, and price inflation are running about 2.4%. Uh, we've also added the 1% um, cost of non consultative pay board uh, for 2017, that totals 2.7 million. Uh, there's an increase in capital financing costs as we borrow more as we implement the estate strategy. And also, um, the Chief Constable, in agreement with the uh, Commissioner, has agreed to fund an additional 25 hours options. Um, to offset some of those additional costs, the Chief Constable has identified £7 million worth of savings, uh, which we implement. That gives the net budget requirement of £313 million. Um, obviously, to fund that, we've got government grants, uh, we've got last year's precept, uh, but we're also assuming that a 1.95% increase in our medium term finance strategy and a bit of an increase in the tax base. So if you took all that into account, we'd still be left with a budget deficit of just over £4 million. The additional uh, flexibility around the precept, um, increase it to £12, uh, would give us an extra £3.1 million. That would be the shortfall of just under £900,000, which the Commission at the moment uh, we'll look to fund from reserves. We have had some information around the collection fund and the tax base, which will probably help uh, to, to uh, bridge that gap. So overall, that's how the Commission plans to uh, balance the budget next year, um, <coughs> by setting the piece up at £12, um, but also using a million pounds worth of reserves, and the Chief Constable identifying £7 million for the payments. I think it's important when you consider the precept, you not just consider the budget for, for the, the year, but also have a, an eye on what, what it means to over the medium term financial strategy. We've updated the strategy. Um, we we'll assume general grants remain at the 17 18 level right across the, the five year period. In terms of the precept, there's clear indication from the government that not only will the flexibility be allowed to increase it by £12 next year, but also the year after 1920. But then we're assuming it drops back down to the 2% level that has been in previous years. In terms of pay inflation, as I mentioned, um, the 1% cap for public sector pay seems to be uh, a bit more flexible. Relaxation around that, uh, we're assuming 2% right across the board. So overall, what does that mean for the Commission to achieve? Well, next year, as I say, we can balance the budget. Uh, in 1920, we're looking at a deficit of 1.3 million, followed by periods of deficits of 5 million, 6 million, and then 3 million. And overall, over the piece, uh, a deficit of 15.8 million pounds we achieved. So there is still a significant financial challenge uh, to be faced by the Commissioner and the Chief Council over the medium term, despite being able to balance the budget next year and the relatively small. <coughs> savings uh, required compared to previous years if we increase the precept again by 12 <coughs> So back to the precept proposal itself. Uh, it is to increase the precept by 12 pounds and that is at the referendum threshold. The impact on the council taxpayer, uh, the band D, uh, it would obviously mean a 12 pound increase which is equivalent to 23 pence per week. For a band A, Taxpayer, which the majority of taxpayers are on Merseyside, this would be an £8 increase next year, equivalent to £15 pound per week. Oh, sorry, £15 per week. The report also details the advantages and disadvantages of that pro, uh, process of increasing the future. Obviously, it builds the, the increase in the base budget. It's in line with the um, referendum threshold that wouldn't be deemed excessive. The increase is also in line with the expectations of the Home Office um, and it would generate an additional £4.4 .4 million pounds, um, next year, which is equivalent to 87 police officers. Uh, as a, it is a modest increase for the band-aid <coughs> property. Obviously there are some disadvantages, 
it does result in an increase uh, the cancer taxpayer and there is risk of uh, adverse publicity. The Commission has consulted on uh, the increase uh, in a number of ways, an online survey has been conducted, there are also a number of uh, roadshows around each local authority to see whether the, the public would support uh, a 12 pound increase. And from that survey, 77% of the people who responded have said they would, would be willing to support the Commissioner. Uh, 21 cent said no, with two don't know. Um, one thing I would point out is been quite a good response rate, 2,200 people there compared to previous years. Um, so there is support for the Commission to increase the precept from the public. Um, I'd ask members now to consider the report and uh, <coughs> the report to the precept by 12 pounds. Thanks very much for the Can I ask a question on numbers? Um, Saturn levels, I'm a bit confused by the various numbers that are put about. Reference, <coughs> reference to the increase equation to 87. Elsewhere, the reference to the equation to 81. Uh, but separate from that, um, according to the echo, and I don't believe the echo is always right, but no, according to the echo, um, we're going to protect officers on the beat, um, and the impression being we're not going to lose officers, but at the same time, the precept uh, proposals demonstrate that the police officer numbers of the forthcoming year will actually reduce by 111. So, which figures are right, and what are we actually asking the public to? understand by what is actually happening in terms of the numbers of the force. I accept that the number of the officers that we're maybe losing, maybe by natural loss, retirements, redundant, etc. Um, but nevertheless, in the situation that we're in, where we, in my view, we need every blessed <coughs> officer we can get our hands on, um, we seem to be in a position where we're telling the public one thing, and we're being asked to actually approve something else. And that's the way it, it seems. And I'm, I'm very concerned about what we're actually putting across to the public. Uh, pages 18 and 19 of the, of the report that you've got go take you through uh, the detail of the impact on staffing levels. But then if, the other problem that we've got is that the increase that, in the council tax will cover a number of things, including some officer posts. So the, uh, the, the pay rise uh, will, will, you know how budgets work, there, there's an overall uh, increase in the income and there are a number of financial pressures on that increase, including the pay rise, uh, including the increase in the number of firearms, officers that the chief feels it's important to achieve. Now, um, the, the deputy chief can, can uh, comment in, in a moment, but I, when asked about this by the public, on the face-to-face -face consultations. Um, I have said that we actually use the figure of 67 officer posts rather than 87. Um, and I said that if, if the people of Merseyside gave a big thumbs down to a council tax increase of this size, and actually, although John described it as um, not excessive, if you do that year on year, 12 pounds a year, year on year, it becomes quite a significant increase in your local taxation. Um, but I have said if we don't achieve that, then we will lose, because the only way we can find those savings is by losing posts. And that's what it would cost in terms of police officers. So it's, uh, we will, by making this increase, we will receive enough income to enable the force to protect jobs which would otherwise be lost if we didn't put the, the council tax up. But there are 111 less officers. There will be. So, yeah. um, so the force continues to shrink. 
uh, as an organisation and will continue to swing. So the legacy of our change programmes over the last 18 months, two years, has been a, a degree of workforce modernisation, so moving people for, that are currently warranted offices out of the own intelligence function and replacing those with police staff, but actually moving down our numbers. So the, the reason the force is going to go <coughs> drop by another 111 is based on the budgets of last year and where we are now, not the year going forward. Uh, what we have done very really hard is to protect the numbers of frontline operational officers, maybe the policing officers are and our officers, but we've had to save four million pounds last year and that, that is the reason our organisation continues to shrink as it is. The precept support that the um, uh, commissioner is, is asking for is that will help us to alleviate the impact of next year and the year after, not the historic impact we've had now that we're paying, that we'll see coming through this year. Let me just say, I understand that. I don't think the full people. I think there's a, there's a big <coughs> difference between saying, as I think you did in consultation, for instance, and Leaflet and Elster says, increased precept will help, this equates to 81 or whatever it is, uh, police officers. Fine. Well, later, we're actually saying that we have money for 111 less. It's, it, I'm concerned about what we're actually uh, saying to the public. In fact, just couple that with the proposal for 20 extra firearms officers. I don't have a problem with the need for firearms officers uh, because of the current state of play. I, I don't have a problem there. What I have a problem with is, are you actually recruiting 20 firearms officers purely, or are you training officers to deal with firearms? And, and I think in that case, you see, I would be saying that rather than putting a budget the cost of extra, 20 extra firearms officers, I'd, in that sense, reduce the overall loss of the force numbers. So, a degree of both. So, we are recruiting uh, into specialist posts, um, but there's a small pool national. There is only a certain number of firearms officers, but we are recruiting directly into those roles from people that are already trained. Um, and we've done do pretty successfully around that one. But you're absolutely right, a significant number of those officers are our own staff that are we out by having to train and bring through our own firearms accreditation. What we will be able to do though, is, is backfill those resources through our our R and R, etc. etc. And the budget support will allow us to do that to build up our letters. Otherwise, that 20 will come off response and resolution, namely with policing or another function. The budget support that we that we're, that we're Commission asking for will allow us to try and alleviate that and recruit in at the bottom end, which is what we've tried to do over the last two years. So, yeah, two further points to respond, Keith. Um, <coughs> first of all, it, it is a growth area in terms of costs, so therefore has to be reflected in the budget and, and, and accepted as this is a growth area. Um, and I suppose you could wash it away, but it's better to have it <coughs> clear that this is a, a shift in. Uh, the police policy in terms of deployment of staff. Um, in terms of the public <coughs> reaction, the, the language used in the leaflet was to protect 67 police officer jobs. It, it, the fact that the ECHO then mm -hmm. presented in a different way and say, these will be frontline, Bobby's on the beat, is, I, I'm afraid, it wasn't from any press release yeah. that I issued. Um, and I, I, I get from the public regularly um, a sense that um, dis real disappointment that this won't be more new officers. So uh, in my opinion, from the experience I have in talking to the public, the vast majority completely understand the situation. In, in fact, on a number of occasions in, in different locations, the public would say to me, I don't mind paying more for the police, I don't mind paying more for the fire service or for the health service. Um, and, and so there is a very clear understanding on the part of the public that we represent uh, around the table that, that um, there is a need for these important services and they are slipping away. But there was also a strong response saying it isn't fair. And that is absolutely true, and I'm, I'm glad that um, we, we can have this recorded publicly today. The public of Merseyside understand exactly what's happening, which is that the government is making a shift off the shoulders of the wealthiest 
most um, able households onto the shoulders of those householders in the least well-off areas and households, so that because we know, or Merseyside, you, your councils will have exactly the same information, the majority of our council taxpayers live in band A property. That means if we are seeking a certain return on our council tax increase, we burden those taxpayers the hardest. Um, so I, 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 it is a regressive step, and I, I uh, am sad that that is happening. It should not be happening. Um, there ought to be a greater understanding in the government that actually it is incumbent on the wealthiest parts of Britain to support those areas like Merseyside, which is not uh, a wealthy overall. I mean, I, I know we have our wealthy districts, but overall uh, we are an area that is heavily grant dependent. And uh, the government should understand that and should acknowledge the greater burden of risk that urban forces like Merseyside carry on behalf of the whole country. And I, I it is with regret that I'm taking this step. I would have wanted to put it up by 7% um, and to consider doing it again next year. I suspect it will be harder next year because next year people will see even less return for their money. <coughs> we'll see and hopefully there'll be a change of heart in between and hopefully, and I can guarantee, we will continue to lobby to make the case and Labour PCCs and PCCs as a group made representations to the government to say the police, the police Settlement isn't fair, it isn't right, and needs to be changed. And as you say, Chair, I, I don't have a problem at all with the difficulties facing the police force, and if it was within my power, I'd find them in all sorts of places to, to ensure they were able to do the job. My concern is at the end of the day, you have a series of numbers of, of staff changes we've said precept increase in rates to this, uh, at the same time, at the end of the day, we're still losing. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's the, what the public will see, and I want to be very clear that at the end of the day, we get the right message across so they do understand yes. both the difficulties of police force face and the reality. <coughs> I agree. Thanks, Keith. Any further questions? I know that you um, propose to retain the funding of the previous year's investment, but this is the second year that the um, community safety partners have taken a cut to the amount they receive, whereas the lease amount has remained the same. And I know from discussion at the last meeting that you really value the services that, that are provided on the ground by this partnership funding. Um, can you explain slightly further, please, your, your rationale as to why there's a difference and why the police are not taken a cut again for the second year but community partners are? We've had quite a challenging conversation with the force this year. Um, the funding of 746,000 goes to, to pay for the drug intervention programme that is operated through, uh, uh, mostly through custody, um, so that everybody who goes into custody is drug tested. Um, and uh, the tests obviously have to be followed through. I don't know if you want to add any more to that, Carl, but um, we, after that discussion, and, and it, it particularly related to the changes we'll, we'll be looking at later on around custody, um, it is quite clear that the numbers of drug tests remains about the same, um, and the costs of it remains about the same. I don't know if you want to so, say anything. So, more. Commissioner, actually, I've had a, a number of challenging conversations around it. So, this, that, that money buys a, a set service. Uh, and it allows those that are coming into custody to receive a set service uh, around drugs intervention and support. If we cut the, the available money, we cut the service. But it, it, it's as simple as that. What we have committed to with the Commissioner is to review that service over the next 12 months, work with the new custody environment, it, sub subject to agreement on that, and then come back to a proposal around the, the future, around what that service should look like, how is it funded, and what it needs to be going through. Just clearly, these are some of the most vulnerable people that are coming through custody. And if we can turn that demand off at that end, A, it helps everybody in the, in the partnership because actually the, the impact of drug use and the and drug users, but absolutely a commitment from, from the force to understand what it's offering. We know the drugs tests that are going through, we know the outcomes that are going through, but could we do it differently coming through for, uh, for 30 years? I mean, 
I suppose my comment on that would be that um, obviously the services that partner agencies provide as well, that, that funding produce the commission set services that, that deal with vulnerable, some of our most vulnerable victims and I think it's a real shame for, for all of us wherever we are in the authority to then face challenges around which of those services <coughs> could potentially would be cut as a result of this reduction in funding. Um, particularly when, as you know, authorities are already taking their own funds to budgets and potentially can't pick up that shortfall. Uh, I don't disagree with what's been said. In paragraph uh, 4217, on page 17, um, there's a uh, sentence in the middle. It was determined that, um, as part of the Community First T1 Review of Custody provision, it was determined that the Drugs and Prevention Programme was still required at its current capacity. Um, notwithstanding that, we are, we are looking at it. If there are fewer people going into custody, then the natural question is, why does the drug intervention program remain at the same level? We'll be looking at that and how it's managed uh, and the impact of the program, which remains still consistently good. It has a good impact. Those who are drugs tested rarely come back to be, <coughs> to be drugs tested again, um, which is one of the findings of it. So we'll make sure that we bring the results of that review to the panel. Um, my question is about consultation. Um, the presentation referred to a modest increase of um, £8 per annum for band aid properties. It isn't a modest increase potentially when added to a potential increase from fire authority, from local authorities. So I'd just like to know what consultation there was with those other authorities before we decided on um, this increase in the free set. There wasn't a, a formal consultation um, with other authorities. Um, we would normally do that after consulting the public. Um, so I, I know that there's been consternation in some uh, of the uh, councils across the area that we didn't ask. Um, I have a responsibility to ensure that the police's budget is as sound as I can make it. Um, I took the view, and I think, without exception, every other PCC has come to the same position. Some consulted, Cheshire, Cheshire's PCC consulted on what, a range of <coughs> options for the public, and the, the, he has now decided to go ahead with exactly the same proposal. But throughout the country, that has been the same conclusion. And my concern would have been, had I not asked for the full uh, increase of £12, £12 a year for Band D, then at some future date, had I asked for extra funding from the government or tried to mount a campaign to say that the cuts are going too far, we are, we are shockingly low in police officer numbers, um, then I, I, it would have been too easy for government ministers to dismiss such representations on the grounds that you had the opportunity to increase the contribution from local council taxpayers and you didn't take it, therefore live with it. And I, um, I think the figures, even with the increase, are still shocking. The level of cuts are still grave. There's no other way of describing it. But now we can say, we've done everything that you said we could do to be prudent, to be reasonable and to, and to raise, uh, raise a contribution locally. Um, and I, if I'd have come to council, I, I suppose we could have included local authorities in the fire brigade. Um, we've never done it before, and it's not a statutory requirement. And I think that's the only answer I can give you. Maybe you might take the view that I ought to have done, but that would be a matter for you. Thank you. Tony, then Cherry. Okay, um, no, I'll just follow up on the on, on, on the increase in that. And I was just looking at the sort of increases last year in, on, on the world, for example. I know we talk about band A, and I think, you know, in the consultation, I'm not, not going to be critical about this, I think we were talking about that with, with people in Birkenhead, that's the feedback I've got. But there is also band D and band, and band E as well. You know, there are a number of people who are pensioners, people who are on very low incomes and that, and by the might have to be housing and so on. I just think the 7% is, is, a, is a huge increase, I really do. And you know, I mean, for example, last year, um, 
you had a 2% increase. The fire service had a 2% increase. Um, uh, adult social care had a 3%. And the local authority put up theirs by 2%. I can see everyone, you know, sort of coming at a, at a much higher one, you know, sort of this year. You know, when we look at what's happening locally, and I agree with you, yet it's a challenge for you and, and that. But the number of people who are using food banks and that, you know, on Merseyside, is increasing. We're, we're asking people who have not had an increase in their wages for the last seven years. You know, and you see what the utilities are doing. Now we're doing it as, as, as elected members, you know. And I, 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 would, I can see your dilemma, but 7%, and if the fire service come for the same, you know, and the local authority go up to their maximum, um, I, I just can't see how people are going to be able to pay. Even now, local authority people, people who are working in the local authority, are getting a 1% increase. You know, and, and most the same most wages have gone up by just over two percent. I don't believe that actually. You know, I, I think most people have not had a wage increase and continue not to have a wage increase. I, I just feel they've done it, uh, it, 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 the really con people into thinking now the Lord we've got the police and crime commissioner who will, you know, carry out what they what, what the central government want them to do. I mean, you were saying, well, if I don't do this, then central government will come back to me next year and say, well, you didn't do what, what, what. So you are pushing it over to local people. And I, I, I'm not happy with it. I really am not happy with increases like that. I'm also, I'm not clear on, on your answer to Keith, really, about the officers, the number of officers were going to increase <coughs> or decrease. It was my, one of my questions on, on briefing. You know, are we going to lose... 110 or 80 officers of that, or are we going to agree? And my final statement is, I saw the Office for a National Statistic, um, uh, Statistics this, uh, recently, and for example, one of my constituents came to me and said, oh, I know this burglary on Merseyside has gone up by 33%. What are you doing? He said, oh, I haven't seen any police officers walking around in, in my ward, for example. I did comment on this a number of months ago. That's what people are saying. We're asking people to pay more for less and less and less. That's, that's my comment. Um, uh, do you know what, in, in large part, I agree with the sentiments you're expressing. Our problem is that uh, we already, I mean, burglaries, for example, is one of those areas where there's acute concern mm -hmm. within the force that the reductions in the number of police officers mean that their, their ability to respond to a call where there's a burglary um, is really limited. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if we, don't, <coughs> if we don't increase the council tax, there will be 87 fewer, because that's how it, it equates in terms of the amount of money we will lose to the, to the uh, forces treasury and um, the, the, the way we calculate what that means. Um, so if you want to protect the numbers of officers that we employ in Merseyside Police, the only way to do it in the current circumstances is to ask local people to shoulder more of the burden. Now, that having been said, we then ask the public. And even the online survey, which is much closer than the one where it could be argued we're there in person and selling the, the proposal to the public. Um, even in the online survey, there is a clear majority in favour of paying more locally to fund the police and to protect more police officer posts. So either way, first of all, it's difficult, I accept that. I remember particularly, I'll never forget him, a gentleman in Path Road in, uh, in Toxin in Liverpool. Uh, had a conversation with him and he said uh, he would have been perfectly happy to pay but he couldn't because he was caught by the bedroom tax. He lived on his own in a three-bedroom uh, property. It was the only property he could get as somebody who rented, having been moved from a <coughs> shared house in multiple occupancy into this property. And so he, I recorded his as a no vote. Even though in principle he was saying he thought <coughs> that, that it, it was good, a sensible thing to ask for. Um, so I am acutely conscious of the burden on local people. 
But my primary responsibility is to deliver an efficient and effective police force locally. And the budget is the only way in which I can help the police to maintain that efficiency and effectiveness. And I don't know what else to do. If you, the panel has the ability to say no. If you do that, all I can do is reduce. That means fewer police officers to the front line. So I really ask you to think very carefully before you put me in a position where the panel says this is too great an increase. So can I just add to that? I mean, it does worry me as well that we're talking really about a 14% increase over the next two years, yeah. which is... But let's just deal with one year I know, time. but I know, but we've almost been told this. Yes, what's going on. And I think it would be, it would be, I mean, my response to all of this has been, look, uh, this is a retrograde step uh, for this year, however, there is very little else that we can do locally. Uh, I don't know if you want to... I, I was going to say, that I, I think if the Chief Constable sat here, uh, when I was talk for him, he would say that the funding arrangements for policing are not satisfactory, as in the rates arranged at the moment. Uh, and, but there is, there is no movement we're seeing at the moment around central government to, to either equate that out in a better way than we are at the moment. So uh, I absolutely support the commissioners that, that we are left with a poor funding arrangement and trying to do the best we are. If you look at real terms, this force was nearly 5,000 police officers. We're now down to just just over three and a half. We will go under the three and a half in the next 12, 12 months, no matter what is agreed here or here in this panel. The opportunity around the, 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 the uh, preset rise, it allows me, because it is me that deals with the change program and the savings program, not to have to go back to my staff and say, we need to save another 80 people out of the organisation. It also allows us then to develop where we're going to go for the future. So we will continue to save, we will continue to change, and we'll continue to get better around what we do. But it does give the, give the force some ability to kind of stabilise where we are, rather than Jeff and I thinking, where do we take the next 80 people? Which is where we, we absolutely are if we don't. Thank you. Cherry, um, my question. Um, there has been uh, a lot of public interest in the costs of running your office. Um, has it been subject to the same rigorous approach to identify <coughs> savings as what you've asked the Chief Constable to do with the force? Can you identify any further savings when you could be saved within your office? We haven't uh, conducted regular reviews as such, other than at each budget to say, are there any areas that we can reduce the costs? However, we carry a number of vacancies every year, and if that vacancy, I think we took one closed out um, this year. Can you remember what group that is? We took out the commission officer, that was funded from the victim services grant. In terms of your main budget, though, we've actually um, funded uh, the SIP. So just just yes. that, that's yeah. 55,000 pounds, so we're consuming that um, overall. I mean, over the, the piece, since you came in, obviously you've reduced it. In terms of comparing the police authority, uh, the budget has been reduced by 800,000 pounds. Year on year, um, the Commissioner, apart from um, pay awards, hasn't increased their budget. Uh, she has paid for, I say this year, the um, Business Management from the Justice Board. Previously, the year before, she made a contribution towards the appropriate adults. So we have identified savings, but those savings have been reinvested uh, in commitments that come up during the course of the year. And pay, and pay rises have, have been paid to all staff at the Technical Police Department Commission. I'm not looking for any sympathy at all. I'm just putting it out there. I think, Chair, just to follow up uh, Jess Collins' question, you are increasing the expenditure this year, according to the figures. And again, if you're putting out to the public that we're costing this, that, and the other, we're, we're costing police force problems in, in numbers, etc., uh, I don't think it really, at the end of the day, is actually tenable to show an increase in expenditure rather than. I know, I know that, that there are clearly messages in what John is saying about the, the items that have been paid for, the pay rewards, etc., etc. But at the end of the day, if you're actually showing an increase in expenditure, when in the police, as far as the police are concerned, you by necessity are imposing considerable decrease, uh, then by imposition. 
using our belt next survey, etc. And uh, if we, we, we have quite a problem with our I mean, the only piece that's gone into our budget this year has been the pay award. The old old budget is a contingency for paying prices. Once the pay award is awarded, then that money is distributed across the, the, the um, budget hold, and that's, that's all that we've had the increase in yeah. the budget. And I think that that's marginal, that it's not as if there's been significant increases of tens, twenty thousand pounds. Yeah, well, that extra post is being consumed within our overall budget. We've not increased our budget. And the post has moved across that. from the police <coughs> as a concomitant com reduction yes, in, in the police force budget, although it's one post, so it's very difficult to see within their postings, but easy to see uh, uh, online. So it was, it was a, a, a resolution of um, a bit of a debate that we had as to who who was going to pay for the Criminal Justice Secretariat, the, the Secretariat of the Board, and none of the departments, and, and I'm looking at just in here, you will remember the debates at the Criminal Justice Board. All other partners around the table were seeing such reductions in their budget that they didn't feel willing to contribute to the cost of the Secretariat. Consequently, my view was we have to secure this post because it's an important contributing post to the uh, improvements and efficiency of the criminal justice <coughs> service. Therefore, if nobody else wanted the post, he ought to sit into my office, recognising that was going to show us a slight increase in, in the numbers that come under me. It's going to get worse once they do. Once they force the changes to complaints, there's going to be another slight increase in the, in the, in the PCC's office. Much against my bitter uh, objections. I think, I mean, uh, again, all I'm concerned about, all is I am concerned about is what, what gets across to the public. Mm -hmm. If you, you, you show an increase in the Commission's office expenditure when the police force is being required to make reductions right across the board, of only the reductions, as far as I'm concerned, then there's a, there's a very confusing message that is going out there. Yeah. And I think, I think, at the very least, there ought to be a targeted reduction even if, through one means or another, that ends up not being achieved. But at least you're aiming for something which <coughs> matches the rewards what is being imposed on the police. It's a public message. I, I think we can consider that for next year. I mean, we haven't put a targeted or flat rate reduction across um, budget holders. It, it, it's been more, well, let's review this service and see what could savings could be made rather than a flat 5% reduction across the board and we've never adopted that approach. But then we can go back and look, see whether we can release some funding here. I mean, we, we couldn't release the, the £65,000 that we used to funding and the business manager, but the decision was made now to maintain that post. projects that we picked up because we had a bit of slack in the office budget which would have fallen as a cost either to the police or to local councils because the provision of an appropriate adult service isn't an option it has to be done the pressure of it is felt in the customer suite i'm using this as an example <coughs> therefore it was clear to me that in order to assist the efficient running of the custody suites it was sensible to provide an appropriate adult service that has now been accepted on all sides and the funding of it will now move back to um, a, a more regularised position. Um, it won't come off my budget, I don't think, which is... Maybe it will. No. It's, it's coming up to be safe. Well, that's right. I'm grateful.